Hi there, this is a screencast for lecture 5. Uh, in a series of uh, four screencasts, we will now cover uh, the four different market structures. Um, I think the one hour lecture, uh, lecture slot will not be enough to do this, so this will hopefully help you to understand in some details the market structures. And I hope to continue recording screencasts in the next, uh, for the next uh, uh, six, seven weeks now. Um, let's start with a perfect competition. This is the uh, th most restrictive, uh, I would say, theoretically, I should say, that because in practice, competition exists but not perfect competition so it's, it's it has the most restrictive assumptions the idea has the most restrictive assumptions i should repeat okay assumptions uh, firms are price takers in perfect competition in, in that means firms individual firms are too small to be able to set their own prices so instead they just sell at the market price and produce as much as they could given the market prices now, usually we would like to have examples. Um, for some as assumptions, examples do not exist, but for this one, I can I can make some examples, give you some examples. For example, uh, grain market grain producers usually uh, sell at the mar for uh, market prices. So if the if the farmer produces an amount of grain and wants to sell it to Tesco, Tesco would point at the market price. And look, market price is that much in the world trade. So for example. Uh, well, international markets, so I cannot really buy from you for five pounds when the market price is four pounds a kilo, for example. Yeah, so the firm, the farmer, will have to just sell at the four pounds of market price and then sell as much as Tesco wants, say. Yeah, so um, that's the first assumption. Six, uh, second assumption is the freedom of entry, um, degree of uh, entry barriers is very low, in fact, non existent. There is no entry barrier in theory for this firm but uh, firm firms went to trying to enter the competitive market I should say when I mean competitive market when I, I mean uh, when I say competitive markets I'm trying to say it's a perfect competition at, or at least close to perfect competition cases in reality however anything that require um, if you want to set up a business is a lot of requirements yeah it's not completely free but it's a theoretical extreme yeah, the, the the easiest probably for a for a person to set up a business in a perfect competitive perfectly competitive market will be the eBay. So you can do through you can enter the market through eBay or Amazon. So e-commerce is basically one of the perfectly competitive sort of markets um, for uh, consumer products. So in the long run, it's quite free, but in the short run, there is always something to ponder well in terms of costs in terms of ability to start the business so in the long run however it's considered to be a free market uh, well not free market free to enter uh, identical products is another assumption we expect the firms to have identical products or homogeneous products uh, given that perfect competition implies no branding no advertising also there will not be any differentiation at all then well, that's a simple, easy, easier to understand thing. You know, agricultural products aren't usually branded. Farmers don't usually sell them on the brand. Um, perfect knowledge. Uh, this is, I think, the most restrictive one as well. Uh, one of the most restrictive ideas as well, or assumptions as well, because it, it requires that the producers and consumers know the prices, know the uh, market very well, um, know what it costs to produce as a result consumers buy at the lowest possible prices we in a, in a given day we don't really know how low the prices are in a market you know one firm might lower the price and some people might know but I won't know I don't really know in a perfectly competitive market for example in practice that one of the hundred firms is offering a discount unless somebody just tells me or advertising there is an advertising or some sort of way of knowing it but here in perfect market uh, perfect competition we assume that there is, a, there is a channel through which we are able to learn about prices of others as soon as they reduce the prices or increase the prices yeah so in practice it is hard to implement but given the internet we, we, we should be able to get some information 
given the availability of access to internet yeah, about other firms pricing easily so there is this particular practical aspect of this as well okay now um, we should really distinguish between short run and long run in, in perfect competition well in, in many markets especially in market structures uh, there are different implications uh, over time for for firms in the market in one of the four markets for um, for perfectly competitive uh, markets or in perfect competitive markets firms uh, make usually normal profits in the long run but there exists potential to make super normal profits now these concepts have been explained to you i have explained this in i explained this yesterday in the in the lecture and i will just uh, skip this for now because it requires drawing and uh, special slides uh, given that this these are meant to be short slides short uh, short screencasts but just Google normal profits and super normal profits, for example, to find out. These are easy to find. I explained you that normal profit is just the amount of profit to keep the business, uh, to, to keep the entrepreneur in the business. So they, so the entrepreneurs usually make normal profits. In other words, the firms make normal profits uh, just to survive. That doesn't mean they don't make anything. It's, it doesn't mean revenues equal co a total cost and profit is zero. No. Uh, they, in terms of accounting profits, they do make profit, but in terms of economic profits, obviously, then uh, average profit becomes normal. In other words, when you take away the operating cost of capital from your accounting profit, that equals zero eventually, and that's a normal profit. Then economic, when the economic profit equals uh, zero, that's a normal profit case. But super normal profits usually imply above and beyond the uh, normal profits. So that implies you have the accounting profit plus to minus the economic profit that yields even a positive number, even more positive. Well, there will still be a positive value rather than zero. That means firms are making large returns uh, to their investment. So um, a measure that usually we use, or uh, well, if you if you work for marketing consultant or you know, some sort of consulting agencies, they usually look at return on investment to judge if there is a normal profit. So higher sorry super normal profit higher return on investment ratios would usually imply the market uh, the firms or participants of this market structure earn super normal profits but in perfect competition we expect this to be uh, to be uh, different in other words in the long run super normal profit do not exist and i'll come to that in a minute now let's look at short, uh, short run uh, equilibrium of the firm this is uh, economics usually look at equilibrium cases and then try to understand what happens if a uh, firm deviates from the equilibrium it, it is it is a nice a nice way of uh, equilibrium analysis is usually a benchmark analysis to other imperfections so economists want to look at theoretical aspects and then compare it to practice that's why we have all this monopoly and perfect competition for us to judge the actual practical implications of the firm or market structures so these perfect, the word superlatives, perfects and the most and things like that, these are just cases for economists to, as a benchmark, used as benchmarks. Okay, in the short run, the uh, firms uh, usually take the prices, so the, the prices are given by market. Output is usually uh, produced at a level where price is equal to marginal cost. And the profits are just simple averages. So average revenue minus average cost times quantity. So for perfectly competitive firm, average revenue is the price and average cost is just the total cost over the uh, quantity. The difference between average and average cost gives us unit profit times quantity gives us the uh, total profit now. Now, then there exists uh, supernormal profit opportunities in the short run. Make sure that this is you understand this point. It's in the short run only that firms can enjoy supernormal profits, but in the long run, they don't exist. Now let's look at a uh, broader picture of what we just spoken about, uh, talked about. The first thing is, let's look at industry level. Notice that in the x-axis we have uh, millions of uh, quantities, in other words the output is measured in millions. Uh, the demand curve for the market, so this is an industry, or in sometimes I use market, the word market actually is similar to what is what I'm referring to is industry, for the whole industry. So this is the supply curve as the prices increase, so if you increase the prices, supply increases as well, so it's a positive slope. The demand curve is usually a negative slope, downward sloping, as the prices increase, you see that the quantities go down, so the, the, there's less demand for the product. 
when the demand and supply cross, we have the equilibrium prices and an equilibrium quantity. In this case, we don't need it because we're not looking at we are not looking at actual demand and supply equilibrium for this case. Now we importantly we're looking at the firm level demand and supply now. Now one thing to notice is again the the uh, y-axis is the quantity uh, the prices or monetary units here we, we just put price but it's actually because of, of the, 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 the the industry uh, demand supply is it's just uh, based on prices but here we're looking at the costs as well so instead of putting P here we have a pound sign implying various different uh, variables will be measured in the y scale here y axis here so the q is in thousands so this is a firm level while uh, here in the industry is a million so each firm produces 1000 well if there are one there are 1000 firms then 1 million quantities in case of industry yeah so let's look at this case now firm is usually a price taker price is in other words given by the market so as you can see equilibrium price is given by the market that's pe here you can attach a number to that PE, say five pounds if you want. And that means, uh, as we suggested earlier, that the, the perfect competitor or a market firm is in a perfect com competition, take the prices as given and sell at that price as much as they can. That implies uh, the firm is facing an individual, its own level of demand as a perfectly elastic demand, basically. That's a horizontal demand curve at this given price. It can sell as much as it can and demand obviously as a result equals average revenue because quantity demand sorry the the total uh, what do you call this the uh, prices are now basically equal to average revenue in this case uh, in other words uh, total revenue over quantity gives us the price so average revenue equals demand and that is also marginal revenue so additional product in additional sale is basically bringing in exactly the same amount of revenue so average revenue and that's horizontal demand curve and average costs as usual starts let's say when you produce fewer units your costs are huge yeah imagine that you know a small firm produces 10 units if you divide the uh, total cost by 10 units this costs are larger compared to someone produce 20 units their average cost then is lower because the uh, the total cost is being spread over many units so as we produce more total cost is spread over many units especially fixed costs the uh, variable cost do not change over time in terms of averages but fixed cost declines average fixed cost declines so as a result average fi average cost will slow slowly grow uh, decline uh, for uh, up to a point reaching its minimum producing beyond it implies there will be a price increase maybe the firm is large now it, it producing more means inefficiencies large firm sorry the, the output is is basically increasing but the firm size is not increasing that implies we, we are all trying to overproduce uh, given our size we should really stop here but for theoretical cases let's assume that uh, large quantities entail large costs so we, we go out, out beyond that sort of point here so um, so firms producing more than what they can in the short run imply uh, sort of um, incur higher unit costs so average cost increases due to diminishing returns to uh, inputs now let's look at the marginal cost the marginal cost is usually again similar to the average cost it starts at, at a higher unit prices or unit costs but as we increase the uh, quantities we we can see that the bottoms out as well at some point and then starts increasing as well so as uh, additional units become more expensive uh, since in the short run one thing that we need to rem remember that uh, the size of the business is not increasing in other words it's difficult to uh, double up the capacity so uh, in the short run usually from lecture four if you remember we, we assume that the in the short run at least one variable remains fixed in this case say the size of the business or the we cannot install extra machines to produce more and we could in employ more people for example in the short run but then employing more pe people to increase the output implies incurring more uh, variable costs as a result what happens is that the uh, marginal cost of producing the next unit becomes more expensive after a point and it gets higher and higher as we produce more right so now 
the point at which the firm should stop producing in order to maximize its profits would then be the point where marginal cost crosses average revenue or marginal revenue here and that would be this point where the quantity equals quantity equilibrium quantity here so at this price this ideal firm should really stop at QE where their marginal cost equals marginal revenue this is called um, uh, efficient allocation here of resources and you know that the uh, the profit then in the short run would be uh, the point where the the difference between the uh, the or in other words I should say this is the profit maximizing point I should have mentioned in earlier uh, this one or this this early but I missed this again so where the company's marginal cost crosses marginal revenue that's where the company's profit maximizing quantity can be determined and that's QE here at this point it looks like these companies these firms uh, ideal firms uh, average cost is lower than its uh, average revenue in other words its price is higher than the average cost at this pro profit maximizing quantity and as a result the firm makes this super normal profit the difference between the price here that that amount here five pounds and then the average cost here says it's uh, uh, four point four pounds say uh, 50 is the difference is the unit uh, unit uh, profit so in other words profit from one unit 50p so 50p times the quantity produced QE gives us the total profit so the shaded area is the profit from uh, selling this quantity optimum quantity so in, in economics we're looking always at uh, optimal optimum quantities optimum prices and it, it turns out for in the short run this would be QE would be the optimum quantity and then this uh, will be the uh, highest profit for this firm now why should the firm stop at this point why shouldn't they produce more if you look at this uh, the additional units look, look for this, because the price is fixed so we don't have to look at the prices look at this additional units are getting cheaper up to a point and they're becoming more expensive but the difference between the price and quantities there is a positive difference between them right price is higher than the uh, marginal cost so if that's the case why not to produce more because addition by producing additional units we can still make profit so we go up to a point where we are not able to make even more i mean any any additional profit because the price is exactly equal to marginal cost producing that next unit means uh, we're paying more now than receiving so say producing the next 10 units here means we're just selling the next 10, 10 units at this price but then they costing us more than the price so that's a, a loss area here uh, well we we don't usually produce that then uh, so that's the what you call this allocative most allocatively efficient uh, what is it allocative yes allocative efficiency occurs at the point margin cost margin revenue equals i'm trying to remind myself now next now uh, we look at productive efficiency at some point well this i think we looked at this one the answer was a here we'll skip that now what if firm uh, what if firm makes a loss because we, we said that in in perfectly competitive firms or markets there are many firms and that implies uh, some firms really to 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 carry on uh, Competing will have to make losses for some time until the uh, market comes back to normal profit level. It is a possibility that uh, some firms will endure it for a long time. But what is the point then at which firms should exist? Oh, sorry, exit the market. You know, some firms cannot stay in the market for a long time. So we look at the short, short run case here now and then look at the loss minimizing. Uh, case under perfect competition and we look also at the case where the firm beyond which cannot carry on producing or selling in the market and this is called a uh, shutdown uh, point or the case uh, the, again the the case of uh, industry here the prices are uh, determined by the market and the firm is just the price taker and imagine that the the uh, the competition becomes so fierce there are so many firms as a result the 
the price came down to P level P1 here, which is a market price is taken as the sales price for the firm, but it turns out this firm's costs are higher. So average cost or cost per unit is higher, even the minimum point here. Even if they produce this quantity, they, they are still making loss apparently. So the difference here is this is the lo lowest difference here between the two in this case is is huge is is a large amount basically so um what the question is how much how many units they should they produce then well they could produce in the short run to stay in the business they could produce this many units but it turns out this may not be the case again i'll tell you why in a minute so let's look at the marginal cost and loss minimizing uh quantity is then where it is the margin cost equals margin revenue that implies it's not the bottom of the average cost curve then it's actually the point on average cost curve where uh, margin cost equals margin revenue which is the the, the the blue point here sorry green point here this point here not this point here but that one the reason is if they produce at this point they are actually producing more quantities more quantities times higher I mean this loss amount will imply greater loss in total rather to minimize the per unit cost or loss the firm should stop producing right here where the margin cost equals margin revenue so this would be the smallest loss for the firm they could produce here by producing less amounts but notice that at this point actually the losses will increase so this rectangle will become the area of this rectangle is higher than this one and similarly area of this rectangle that that if they produce right here will be even higher i don't have the draw, drawing here now but you can see that yeah if they produce right here at this point lowest point then they are actually making loss extra loss here yeah this is extra so it's higher than this point here yeah this this area so they should really stop at this point here where the margin cost equals margin revenue and sell this quantity qe for the time being in the short run so it doesn't have the title here but it's a short run loss minimizing point and firms would eventually shut down when, when um, the quantities sorry the uh, the price they charge is just covering the variable cost i uh, i didn't have the looks like i don't have the uh, graph for this one but just i'll just shortly mention this that a firm is incurring losses then it should shut down uh, where the average cost uh, the price is just covering the average cost and contributing a little bit or even no contribution but it just covers the variable cost average variable cost then it should shut down beyond that point basically yeah okay so I'll, I'll talk about this in in lecture a bit if i guess maybe i'll have to make a recording for this one because it it looks like i failed to forgot to include these slides there where we talk about we where, we where i wanted to describe the shutdown point so we'll have to come back to that now there is here is a quick question here um, i will not spend time on this but notice this uh, a, f uh, a point here if you if you read this uh, let's read it first for example a f perfectly competitive firm is producing 1000 units of output per week at a total fixed cost of 1000 uh, pounds so that's average fixed cost of a pound a uh, total variable cost of uh, 1200 so dividing it by 1000 means uh, average variable cost of 1.22 pounds and a marginal cost of one pound if the market price is that much what should the firm do now we shouldn't really be uh, going forward to discuss this further if given that the price is or, or calculate anything other than just looking at the marginal cost and price if the price is higher than the marginal cost it should produce remember we said that if the price is higher than the addition units cost then we should continue uh, producing so increase output because people are valuing it you know higher than the what it costs basically so we can sell more at this given price so continue selling so see now oh here it is i thought i didn't include it but it appears i did include but didn't realize that i did it <laughs> i had done it i should say so uh, the um, the uh, the market uh, demand curve or supply curve here given to us in millions and and we have the firm's marginal cost curve and then its average cost curve here as usual the uh, marginal cost curve cuts through the middle of the uh, bottom of the average cost curve it looks like it's a bit off the, the position here it's somewhere here but that's drawing just excuse me for that 
Right, so now the average variable cost, so total variable cost divided by the quantities. So this is per unit cost here. So average variable cost as usual, higher and gets lower and lower over time and then it goes increasing again. Now, where is the price now? At what price is this company selling? If this uh, market equilibrium is uh, price is P2 is at this point here, so they notice that this is P2, it's the continuation of the other slide. I think this is because it, we had this question in between that I forgot. Okay, the P2 here is basically the market determined price and the average revenue obviously is then for the perfectly competitive firm will be that uh, price as well. And at the same time, it's a marginal revenue as well. Notice that this is quite low, which means it's much, much below the average cost curve. And average cost, if you remember, is made up of uh, average variable cost and then average fixed cost. So average fixed costs are usually much lower. They, over time, they decline. They don't bounce back up. They decline over time. It doesn't have, we don't have it here, just to demonstrate the case. Um, but notice that the shutdown point is this point here, where the marginal cost crosses the marginal revenue. So we stick to the rule, marginal cost, marginal revenue, for equilibrium quantity. Oh, for equilibrium quantities. So the quantity here would be the uh, shutdown quantity. If the price goes below this point, in other words, if it, you know, at the moment, average cost curve is being sort of kissed, uh, kind of uh, swiped by the revenue uh, from bottom here, right? It just, just touches it. Uh, in other words, the the thing, the quantity, uh, the price at the moment is just about to cover the variable cost only. The difference between, say, so for example, I should tell you about fixed cost as well. So for example, the difference, as you can see, is increasing over time between average variable cost and average cost. The average cost, as I said, was the sum of average fixed cost and average variable cost. The difference here over time, as we produce more, is declining, the minimizing. Yeah, it's diminishing. The reason is that fixed cost is declining as well. So the difference then between AC and AVC is the fixed cost. Yeah, it's declining. And as we produce less units, then our units, then obviously the fixed cost is larger. So the difference is large here as well. Now the question is where we should stop if the prices keep going down and down, where should the firm stop in the short run? They should st stop in the, or producing in the short run at the point where they just barely cover the average variable cost and that's this point here at this point the variable cost just touches the price or price just the bottom of average variable cost and that's also the point where the marginal cost as well crosses the average cost bottom of the average cost yeah so beyond this point if the price goes down there's no point producing for the firm because the price is say two pounds and the average variable cost is two pound ten and it doesn't even cover the uh, the costs of making the product so they should stop right here um, next thing is uh, fixed costs obviously are covered with that but then because if additional units are being produced at a cost higher than the price there is no point in producing yeah okay so rule here is this for short run shutdown point the point at which they should produce I should say it's always referring point is referring to quantity is when the average cost is average variable cost is higher than the price it becomes higher so uh, beyond that point it, it is uh, it is it is not uh, profitable to continue producing that's the rule here so next now long run equilibrium remember initially in the very first slide with the graphs i told you that the uh, firms make super normal profits in the long uh, in the short run but usually in competitive markets, firms do not have any supernormal profits in the long run. That's because the uh, the market gets populated by firms, and in the long run, long run average, long run average cost is equal to short run average cost, which is equal to marginal cost, which is equal to marginal revenue, and which is equal to average revenue. Everything is equal basically. Let's look at the graphs. That that probably makes sense than just saying it, they are equal. Let's look at the. Uh, Again, market prices, market uh, quantities here. Uh, move on to the uh, uh, firm level. Now the, the the demand curve again is straight line. The price is equal to the the margin revenue, which is also, also average revenue. Just to mention here, 
and let's assume that long run average cost is usually I mean say that it's lower than the price say we produce somewhere here uh, we have uh, we have what you call this uh, few firms in the market and we make super normal profits so from this one point onwards we're making super normal profits because average costs are lower between this point and this point than our price so we have super normal profit to a degree so we can produce at this point probably but then obviously the production point is usually the point where the marginal cost equals margin revenue at the moment we don't have this graphs so we just ignore them for now but there's a ch uh, opportunity to make a short run super normal profit just keep in mind now if there existed this kind of situation where super normal profits are available in the short run a lot of firms enter the market a lot of firms enter the market um, seeing that they can make money because others are making money extra money then that implies supply shifts downwards notice that when supply shifts downwards the price equilibrium price moves down yeah reducing the average price in the market the market price that's a long run price that implies the price at which firm sells its product will go down as well and it will be uh, the point at which in the long run the firm will again start making the normal profit that's the point here where the firm just covers all its costs all its unit costs yeah it includes variable cost and fixed costs here in the long run and remember uh, in the short run, the firm may make for some time uh, some some uh, amount of super normal profit, but in the long run, however, as the firms realize, they are able to set up new firms, are able to set up uh, operations, and then that implies a greater amount of supply. Supply shifting implies a price decline, and that implies lower prices. And in the long run, the competitive market exists because firms are just having to cover their costs. Yeah, that's the long run case. Now, QL profit returns to normal case. So that's that. And in the long run, it's just a summary. It's just a summary. Let's see if there is anything else I can. Yeah. If you remember, I summarized earlier that long run average cost equals average costs in the short run, marginal costs in the short run, and marginal revenues and marginal average, average revenues. Now, that's because the firms tend to produce in uh, perfect competition at the lowest possible price. Because perfect competition is ideal case or theoretical case, we can assume here that the firms are producing at the bottom of the average cost curve. That also implies that since average costs are tangential to the uh, various short run costs curves, then the bottom at the bottom of the um, average cost curve in the long run the short run curve also tangential to the price as well because well in the in the long run we assume that the normal profit can be made only so it in the end then normal profits only exist at this point and that's what the point is as well for that's also the point for firms to to produce and marginal cost as well cuts through the point here as a rule now this is a theoretical case you may argue that how the firm can work out with what its marginal cost well that's true in reality we don't know what our marginal cost curve is given that a firm produces so much but however firms are trying to kind of approximately work out what their marginal costs are you, we always make marginal errors usually yeah in production but just keep in mind, in the long run, there doesn't exist super normal profits and the, the point at which uh, the firms produce, individual firms produce, is the point where marginal cost crosses average cost and short run and long run average cost uh, uh, minimum points. So that's the point. And at this point, price just equals to this values as well so there's no super normal profit but that doesn't necessarily imply again that the firms do not make profit they do make profit accounting profit they make hard cash but just they make the hard cash that just covers their opportunity cost of capital remember the example of the things that you uh, described earlier in the lecture about your laptop using your laptop in one business and moving it to another and then covering the opportunity cost and being uh, making a super normal normal profit that's the case here for firms as well firms could have spent this amount this investment in elsewhere and make more money however if they are just making 
super a normal profit just just to cover everything there is no difference between going to that business or this business so they stick to the perfect competitive business as well okay right so implications here of a uh, perfect competition I have been talking about uh, firms not or in reality perfect competition not being uh, realistic that's the case and one important uh, uh, that uh, one important uh, reason for firms uh, or the market structure, this market structure not existing in reality is, is the economies of scale being absent in perfect competition. Economy scale is incompatible with, uh, with perfect competition because if firms are able to increase their scale independent of the market, then that implies they have market power. They can set the prices as uh, the price that they want. So that's not perfect competition anymore. A perfect competition is a theoretical case where, or ideal case of all competitions, or market structures where firms are unable to have any control over the price or they'll scale. So they have to just stick to the uh, rule uh, set by the market or by the whole, all other firms. So they just follow the same rules of production and pricing. And at, if there is economy of scale, again, the, the, the power will accumulate onto one person or from one firm and then it just uh, drives out everyone else. And that's not perfect competition. It, it's, we are moving towards more of monopolistic competition or beyond even oligopoly, even beyond monopoly. Yeah? So economies of scale is the one of the most important reasons why perfect competition uh, doesn't exist in reality. In reality, firms try to control their prices, try to uh, take advantage of all the opportunities in the market by uh, uh, producing efficient, more efficiently. Now, does it, that doesn't mean uh, that the, uh, the market or the what, what, um, firms do not have efficient production. In fact, uh, ideally or in theory, I should say when I say ideal, it's about theory. Basically, theory usually gives us the I ideal points and or benchmarks to compare with the reality. Uh, the consumers apparently benefit in this case when there is a perfect competition. That means prices equal marginal cost. So firms sell at the cost price or the price that just covers their uh, costs of making that additional unit. That's the case of allocative efficiently efficiency sorry if the prices are if the prices are higher than marginal cost as we said firms try to produce more to take advantage of extra profits and in the end uh, they end up equating the price to marginal costs and that's the case for mar uh, for the for the for the perfect competition prices are also kept low remember the competition induces low prices basically the behavior changes as, as soon as there's a per uh, perfect competition and firms also must be efficient to survive. Remember, if you go back in the long run, we said they produce at the lowest possible point. And for a firm, that is the case. Uh, the, the case of lowest possible uh, cost is where the long run average cost hits its minimum, and that should be the price. So if we assume that the market price just allows them to produce at that point, then in the long run, obviously, they need to be more efficient to keep the prices that low, which means less wastage so there will be fewer uh, plastics and things like this in the ocean basically if we can if we can assume that there is a perfect competition i think we will be uh, we won't be damaging the environment we will be just selling at that price that everyone affords it basically okay um that's the end for end of perfect competition screencast i think i wanted to, uh, i planned it for an even shorter period of time but it turns out i'm spending about 20 plus minutes here I guess I haven't checked the time, but it feels like I spent 20 minutes. 